Hello, ATC family. I greet you in Jesus' name. I want to take a moment to talk to you about the manna that we read about in the scriptures. In Exodus chapter 13, verses 13 through 31, you can read more about it for yourself, but you'll discover that the Lord provided this bread from heaven miraculously while the Hebrews in the wilderness for 40 days, or 40 years, I should say. In Numbers chapter 11, we find a description of the manna. It says, now the manna was like coriander seed and its color like the color of bedulum. The people went about and gathered it around and ground it in millstone or beat it in the mortar, cooked it in pans and made cakes of it. And its taste was like the taste of pastry prepared with oil. Think of fine Italian restaurant that you dip your bread in, that extra virgin olive oil, and it's so fragrant and so wonderful. God provided this for his people. In the New Testament, we read about how Jesus provided bread and fish for those who had gathered to hear his teaching. And later on, there was a huge crowd that followed him after that miraculous event. And Jesus called them out and he said, you know, you're following me because you want more bread. And they said, well, yeah, I mean, Almighty God provided that to our forefathers in the wilderness. And Jesus made an interesting statement in John chapter 6 and verse 41. Let's jump back to verse 35. John chapter 6, verse 35. And Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. He who comes to me shall never hunger, and he who believes in me shall never thirst. Jesus was making a very bold statement there. In fact, in John chapter 6 and verse 41, then the Jews complained about him because he said, I am the bread which came down from heaven. They knew what he was saying. He was professing to be the Messiah. Jesus again affirms in verse 51, I am the bread which came down from heaven. If anyone eats of this bread, he will live forever. And the bread that I shall give is my flesh, which I shall give for the life of the world. Well, there's a beautiful parallel between the manna of the Old Testament and Jesus, who is our bread of life. We know that the manna was a divine provision from Almighty God. Divine provision. In fact, there are those who have studied this out and they've said that perhaps a thousand dump truck loads of manna was provided every day for God's people. That's miraculous. Not only that, but let's just think about this. Jesus Christ, our living bread, is miraculous provision for us. Jesus was not just a man. He was God manifested in flesh. The infinite became finite. He was the bread of life. He was divinely provided to us to help us and to provide salvation for us. You'll remember that Jesus dealt with the bread the same way every time. Whenever you see Jesus uh, handling bread, you will see that he, he blessed it, he broke it, and he gave it. And Jesus, as the bread of life, he was blessed, he was broken, and he was given to all of us. So the manna was divine, and the manna was also consistent. It was consistent. Every day there was provision. And today, I want you to know that Jesus Christ is our con consistent provision in this uncertain time. Know that Jesus in our lives is not overwhelmed. He's not watching Fox News and saying, I can't believe this is happening. He's not overwhelmed by all the prayers that are being offered by the many nations of our world today. He is an ever-present and ready help in our time of trouble. Our Savior is consistent. He's like that manna. It's an everyday thing. And our Savior cannot be depleted. Can I tell you he doesn't lose interest? He doesn't fail. He doesn't quit. And he is certainly not on restriction right now. He is the most essential thing that we have, and he's working today. He's like that manna. He's going to be here today, and he's going to be here tomorrow. Let's just realize that it's up to us to pick up that manna, like the Hebrews of the Old Testament. If God wanted, he could have just put the manna in their bellies. 
If he could put it on the ground, he could put it in their belly, but he wanted them to participate in that miraculous supply by picking it up and preparing it and eating it. God has provided his word to us. He's providing his spirit to us. His mercies are new every day. His grace is sufficient, but let's pick it up. It's around us. God is with us today in your room, in your living room, in your kitchen, wherever you happen to be, in your essential job workplace, God is there and he is enough for you. But you have to pick him up, speak his name, make your petition known to him, read his word, and you'll find that it's sweet. Like the manna of the Old Testament, it's sweet. There's a sweetness that's involved in a relationship with God, even in times of trial. And I want you to know that when this is all over, God is going to prove himself strong to us. We're gonna look back and realize that he was at work all along. Well, this is my word for us today, that Jesus is our bread of life. Get involved with him. Pick up that manna today. God is your provision. I'm praying for you. Our executive team is praying for you. God bless you.